Uh, hello? Um, it's Councillor Simcock here. Look, look, I'll, I'll have to be brief because I'm at work, but um, I just wanted to say that um, I, I'll have to miss that site inspection on Thursday. Yes. Yes, um, I've got a funeral and then a bit of a do back at the house. Yes, I, th I think you could say it was someone I knew very well. Yes, it is. It's very sad. A bit of a do. A bit of a do. Smiling faces in public places. Trying to hide your problems from your friends and relations. A bit of a do. Invited to a bit of a do. It's a small town, posh, not your fair. Best behavior, being aware of others who are doing it too. Others who are seeing through you. A bit of a do. All tickety boo. New dimensions for family tensions Mentioning the little things that shouldn't be mentioned A bit of a do, bit of a do Invited to a bit of a do We do do Another chance to be sarcastic about me deeply searching philosophical questions. I wouldn't. Not today. I just meant I'm surprised you've been invited. Since you aren't, you know, family. I haven't been invited. I've come because I felt I must. Hello, Elvis. Hello, Carol. It's all right. Nothing's happened. We're not together again. I wasn't even thinking you might be. This is hardly the time for idle speculation. Well, I thought Carol and I being together again, if we were, which we aren't, would be too important to be described as idle speculation. Oh, Elvis, don't tell me that today of all days the great philosopher has discovered a talent for linguistic analysis. Mum. I'm sorry, love. It's nerves. I mean, it's all very well saying it's not got to be a sad occasion. It's to be a celebration of a life and not the mourning of a death, but it puts us in a very awkward position. I mean, if you do care, you're so sad you can't smile. And if you don't care, you're so anxious to look as though you do that you don't smile. I think everybody here today will care. True. I feel so... Oh, you know, some of the things I said. I feel awful. Elvis just kissed Carol. Don't be so inquisitive. It isn't appropriate at a funeral, it isn't curiosity. No, I know, but I was looking for crumbs of comfort. Oh, crumbs of comfort? Elvis is in love with Jenny. Elvis kissing Carol isn't a crumb of comfort, it's a slice of trouble. No, but... Well, I mean, if Elvis went back to Carol, then when Paul comes out of prison, he and Jenny... Well, I mean, he is the father of her children. And they like Carol. Well, I like them all. Yes, well, we can't stand here all day liking everybody. Come on, best foot forward. And smile. You will not. Well, they said it's to be a happy day. You'd have wanted it. Not that I imagine they had riotous joy in mind. And smile a bit. Mm. Not too much. Hello, love. Hello. Hello, Elvis. Hello, Carol. Oh, we haven't got back together again, Betty. We just ran into each other. You make it sound like a traffic accident. First tactless remark of the day. Well, it's hit me. I was going to make the first tactless remark of the day. What? Well, it's tactless I'm making now. It'd be the second tactless remark of the day. But you can't. Not now. Not after you. Well, not wetted our appetites exactly. I mean, we've none of us such insensitive appetites that they would be wetted by tactless remarks on such a sad occasion. But if you don't tell us what it is, I mean, we'll only be wondering. Oh, we're only human, thinking that it might be more tactless than what it is. Well, uh, all right. I was going to say, fancy this happened to Ted, of all people. 
He prides himself so much in his safe driving. Well, there you are. <laughs> that's life. Well, it's hardly life, exactly, in this case. I think that's the trouble at funerals. Everything you say, the circumstances seem to blow it up out of all proportion. If you say we've got a nice day for it, it sounds heartless. And if you say we've got a rotten day for it, it sounds depressing. Best to just shut up, really. Elvis! Oh, I, di I didn't mean it personally, Carol. Oh, Lord. I just meant it's... It's awful, standing around talking like this when... Oh, heck. No. I'll go. Oh, thanks. Well, if you go, certain people in this gossip-mad town will only talk. Oh, Rita, as if anyone would today. Are you all right? Yeah. I'm sorry, Mum. This is stupid. There's nothing stupid about showing grief. I was just thinking. It just came home to me. Poor Dad. I know. Well, I shouldn't be saying this today of all days. But since I'm thinking it, I may as well say it. I'll say it for you. Whatever Rodney might say about Dad's driving, you're amazed he never had an accident before. Oh, yes, frankly, I am. To wear. I know. I mean, if it's black, at least you know where you are. Yes, I know. I mean, I kept saying to myself, what does it matter what you wear? I know, but it does. I know. I mean, I agree in theory about, you know, celebrating a life, not mourning a death, but, well, I mean, where does that leave us? I vowed years ago not to worry about social niceties like that anymore. I know. But you still do. I know. Good God. Dad! Well, ten out of ten for recognition. This is a rum do, isn't it? How are you, Mr. Simcock? Alive, Carol. I'm alive. I'll go and help him sit down. Thanks, Carol. I don't know why I'm saying thanks. It's not my responsibility. I'm not married to him anymore. It's because you're a warm-hearted person, Rita, and you know how much Ted is suffering. Nothing more painful than guilt. Not even two broken limbs and a sore head? No, probably not even that. Ooh. Say it. Say what, Rodney? What you're both thinking. How do you know what we're both thinking, Rodney? I can see it in your eyes. What can you see in her eyes, Rodney? What you're thinking. What are we thinking, Rodney? Look at what she's wearing. Look at it. Exactly. Well, it's up to her to interpret what Neville would have wanted in the way. She sees fit. Come on, let's get in that church. Well, come on. Not what he would have wanted. I was mortified, Elvis. I was. I, I was mortified. Don't raise your voice, Ted. Let's not have a family row. It'd hardly be appropriate. Hardly be appropriate, the woman says. Hardly. What's appropriate about being bleeped in the middle of a funeral oration? I mean, I couldn't believe it. There I was, solemn moment, and a bleep, 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 solemn moment straight down the pan. I didn't know I was going to be bleeped. Well, why didn't you switch it off then? I'd regard that as dereliction of duty. Your, your true reporter never sleeps. Do you keep it on while you're at it? There's no need to be cruel, Ted Simcock. Well, I mean, walking out in the middle of a funeral service. How was I? I was mortified. I had to. I had to get in touch with my news desk. Well, what 
was so important, it couldn't wait any road. An ongoing inquiry into professional corruption involving a guest at this funeral do. What? Who? I'm not at liberty to divulge. You're not going to do in-depth interviewing at this time of solemnity. Of course I'm not. You think I don't know how to behave? Yes. Oh, we are sorry, Liz. Yes, yes, we're mortified. Oh, please don't worry about it. I think Neville would have rather enjoyed it. Is that woman made of ice? I didn't think so once. I hardly wanted to be reminded of that. I love you. I want you. Jeffrey, shut up. It's not appropriate. But grief is an aphrodisiac. Well, I think that was despicable, and so does Lucinda. It was very important that the news desk contact me before they do at the house. Why? Well, they want me to interview somebody involved in widespread corruption and dishonesty. And you can interview this corrupt person at my mother's husband's funeral? I think you're a reptile, Elvis, and so does Lucinda. No, I have to arrange to see this corrupt person at a time that suits this corrupt person. Oh. So, what time does suit you? Me. You. Hello. Yes. Hello, Bessie. Oh, hello, Rodney. Thank you for coming. Lovely service. Just what Ada wanted. I think so. The house business? Oh, I was impressed when we visited you. Oh, thanks. Well, it hardly seems right to say it today, but uh, well, it's going very well. Up oh, 7.3% across the old spectrum. Rodney. No, please. No, Neville specifically wanted this to be a happy occasion. And 7.3% across the whole spectrum? Oh, no. that makes me very happy. Now, the champagne, please, don't hold back from some sense of social propriety. Indulge yourselves just this once for Neville. Ted! Um, you coping, Ted? Uh, um, well, Carol, yes, yeah, been very helpful. Thank you for inviting me back, Mrs. <clears throat> Liz. I didn't expect it. I know, and if I thought you had, I wouldn't have invited you. Simon! Lucinda! Mother. So, six weeks to go. Mother, I, I think we should put the wedding back, and so does Lucinda. I don't see any alternative under the circumstances. I won't hear of it. Never would be most upset. Besides, we... Well, I... Yes? I don't want any shadow hanging over my great day. Me neither. Over my great day. Well, isn't that a little selfish of you? I mean, think of Neville. He thought of everyone's happiness all the time. Think of me. I want a wedding. I'm going to need some fun. Now, off you go. Stop worrying and have some champagne. Champagne? To celebrate. Celebrate? Neville specifically asked for champagne in his will, Simon, to celebrate his life, his happy life, his long idyllic first marriage and his short idyllic second marriage, his life. Mr. Perkins, good to see you. And Mrs. Perkins, what a charming little heart. Oh, thanks. You're a great girl. Well, thanks. My son's a fool. Well, no, not a fool. I mean, how could, um... I'll go and get you some food. Oh, right. Yes. No, I was just saying, Jenny, um, nobody could say anybody was a fool for falling in love with you. No, thanks, Ted. Never wanted today to be normal, and there you are putting your foot in it as normal. Jenny! Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Not today. Yes, you should, according to your argument, because you normally say things like that. Ted! Oh, Jenny. I'm sorry. Oh, I am. I'm sorry. Oh, it's a pain. No, I'm finding it very hard to be my usual sunny, generous, jovial self. No, it's me as well, Ted. I'm finding it awful trying to be normal when I want to cry my eyes out. I... Well, all of us, really. We were quite rude to Neville at times, and he was such a lovely man. Why are we all so selfish, Ted? Because we're human, Jenny. Because we're human. I like that. Beg your pardon, sir? Hmm? Oh, uh, nothing, Eric. Just nothing. Uh, uh, champagne, sir. Oh, I don't think I should in my condition. <laughs> oh, uh, well, maybe I'd better... No, he would have wanted it. There you go, sir. Tickety but You are, Eric? Well, it isn't, is it? I mean, whichever road you look at it. It isn't what, Eric? Tickety-boo, it isn't tickety-boo. What isn't tickety-boo, Eric? 
life. Life isn't. Oh, life. No. It isn't tickety boo. Oh, I, I was just going to look for the food. I'm not so hungry, but. Why shouldn't you be hungry? Most people are. Tension makes them hungry. Come and have a quick look at the gun. What? I'd like to get out of it all for a moment, please. Y yes. Yes, of, of course. Liz, I please. Uh, before you say something, you'll regret. No, 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 no. I was going to say something nice. Precisely. You what? Well, before you say something nice, which you'll regret, I think I ought to make it clear that I'm not burying the hatchet. I see. Oh, I'm talking to you today and today only because Neville would have wished it. And today his wishes are paramount. Well, well, yes, yes, of course. Now, this little plot was Neville's pride and joy. Ah, oh, well, it's, it's very nice. Oh, that's a lovely spirea. Neville and I had separate beds. Ah, oh, well, I don't, I don't think I want details in the garden. I was speaking of the garden, Rita. Oh, well, of course. I, I mean, as if you'd... Well, well I, I mean, anyway, it's none of my... Sorry. This was my area over here. Oh, yes, well, it's, uh, it's very... Was? Will you move? No, I haven't really thought. Will I be able to sell, with your ring road being built at the bottom of my garden? Ah. Oh. And here is the magnolia. The fateful magnolia. How naive of me not to realise where we were heading. I was surprised. It's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. Soon to be no more. No. I must go back and do my duty. Thank you, Rita. What for? Oh, this little talk, this little walk. They have made me feel better. Oh, Jeffrey. Rita. Now, you're not going to tell me you want me again, are you? Not a bit upset, you know. You are upset, aren't you? Yes. It's Liz. No. She's shown me that magnolia. It's become an obsession with her. Sometimes I think she cares more for that than she did for... What do you mean, snap? Well, I'm upset about Liz. I'm dreadfully ashamed. What about? Oh, I just like of her. When I left England, she was a spoiled, selfish girl. I suppose I assumed she couldn't change and hadn't changed. Well, has she changed? Well, I certainly didn't think her capable of the courage she's shown. Courage? Hiding her grief so bravely. Hiding a grief? Excuse me, darling. Back soon. Where are you going? Big Brother is going to be supportive for the first time in his life. Don't speak to me, then. Oh, I'm sorry, Ted. I didn't realise it was you. No, there are lots of people encased in plaster here, aren't there? I'm sorry. <clears throat> well, how are you, then? I'll recover. The scars will heal. And the mental scars? Healed, almost. Forgotten she ever existed. She? Oh, Corinna, no, no, no. No, I, I meant the accident, Neville, you know. Rita, is it possible for a woman to entirely and utterly fool a man over experiencing sexual ecstasy? You what, Ted? Oh, incidentally, I'm... Uh, Luckily, undamaged in those areas. Oh, uh, good. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm relieved to hear it. Yeah. I mean, I speak disinterestedly, of course. Yeah, no, no, of course, I realise that. I mean, those days, I mean, yeah. they... Yeah, no, I mean, <clears throat> sexual ecstasy. Can it be, you know, simulated? D Ted, should we be discussing this here today? No, 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 of course not. No, not at all. But you see, Corinna, she conned me in business. Is it possible that she could have called me in, you know, in bed? Because, I mean, I mean, she regularly made movements consistent with gratification. I mean, she regularly uttered cries indicative of ecstasy. She must have liked me a bit, wasn't she? Ted, I really don't think this is the time or place. No, 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 not at all, no. We'll, we'll change these subjects. Um, <clears throat> but you see you... You know, you, uh, 
Sometimes in, in our marriage. Made movements consistent with gratification. Well, I mean, yes, you did. Uttered cries indicative of ecstasy. Well, I mean, yes, you did. Were they? Sometimes. You are? Sometimes they were genuine. And sometimes I was giving you what I thought you wanted to hear. Rita. Ted, I really think we ought to change the subject. Yes, yes, yes. All right, cool. I mean, I mean, I don't think that I could trust a woman again. In, you know, I mean, if I felt... Corinna, though, she, I mean, she couldn't have found me utterly repulsive. I mean, could she? No, Ted. I dare say she couldn't have found you utterly repulsive. Oh, Ted. Oh. Well, thank you, Rita. Thank you. <coughs> I see Lizzie's talking to you. Yes, but only for today. After today, it's back to silence. It's pathetic. It's rather inconvenient as well, as I'm in love with her brother. I like your clothes, Liz. Good heavens. Quite good heavens. Oh, all sorts of reasons. Good heavens, Geoffrey's making small talk. Good heavens, Geoffrey said something nice to me. And good heavens, Geoffrey likes my clothes, because everyone else disapproves. I didn't mean these in particular. I mean all your clothes. I like your dress sense. Good heavens. Once again, why good heavens? Good heavens. A member of the male sex has noticed my clothes. Good heavens, the great anthropologist who spent a lifetime studying people who run around in the buff can appreciate dress sense. And good heavens, Geoffrey has now said two nice things to me. Making, when you include all the childhood years, a grand total of two. More champagne, madam? Thank you, Eric. Tickety bloody boo. Well, for what it's worth, I missed you all those years I was abroad. Good heavens, meaning I hadn't the faintest idea. Nor did I till now. Silly, isn't it? Look, Liz, is there anything you need? Help, support, a roof, a shoulder to lean on? You could help me now. At your service. Here comes Ted. I think I know what he wants to talk about. You can make yourself scarce and leave us alone. Oh, well, that was hardly... Uh... Well, all right. Hello, Ted. Oh, I am flattered. You are. You, struggling all the way over to speak to me. Well, since you didn't even move an inch toward me. Oh, Lord, I never thought. Oh, not your strong point. Thank you very much. Oh, heck. Not a very good start. On what? Diplomacy, I'm not very good at it. Not having had much practice. Ouch. But Liz, doesn't it? Thing like this. Put everything in proportion. Yes. So? No. What? The answer's no, Ted. I haven't asked the question yet. The question is, will I end my feud with Rita forever, become friends? You were going to say, I shall need friends and I shouldn't be petty. Oh, eh. Nicely put, Ted, but the answer's no. Please, why? I can't do it, Ted. I don't know how to. Well, I feel sorry for you. Oh, spare me a pity and go. All right. All right. How much do you know? About what? Nothing. Well, I've done nothing wrong. Well, why did you say, how much do you know, then? Because I'm not very good at this sort of thing. Well, what sort of thing do you think this sort of thing is? Hounding innocent people, making false allegations, the media. All right, let me put it another way. What exactly do you falsely and ludicrously claim that I've done? I can't talk about it now, Simon. It's not the time or place. Well, thanks for not coming to meet me. Well, I know how much you enjoy feeling hard done by. Well, that's the reward I get for trying to help. Trying to help? Yeah. Uh, I begged Liz to be friends with you. Oh, Ted, why? Oh, I don't know. I suppose I wanted you to remember me with some affection. Oh, thanks, Ted. No, I failed. She said, I can't do it, Ted. I don't know how to. I feel sorry for her. That's what I said to her. She wasn't pleased. Well, thanks anyway. Mm. Mm. Oh. Well, Ted, how are you? Oh, terrific. Limpins me hobby. <clears throat> well, I realise this isn't the time or the place, but how's business? 
Well, if it wasn't that on an occasion like this, it would seem rather insensitive to say so. I'd say extremely satisfactory. Up 10.3% across the whole spectrum last Betty. night. Well, if you did say that, I might say equally insensitively that is there any chance of you reconsidering the possibility of my working for you? If you did say that, I might well reply not only insensitively, but extremely bluntly that you described us as crackpot lunatic fringe, animal rights, trendy health food, freaky nut nuts. Folk exaggerate, don't they? Mm. No, I've had time to think, you know, to reappraise my ideas vis-a-vis -vis the other offers I've been considering and, well, you know, to put it frankly, uh, I was wrong. That's all there is to it. Oh, well, under the circumstances, I feel, don't we, Rodney? Yes, Betty, we do. And we have a vacancy for an experienced person to supervise our rapidly expanding organic fruit and vegetable buying operation. Incorporating nuts, grains and pulses. Oh, oh, good. Oh, good, good. I like the sound of it. No, I do, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do foresee the possibility of one slight snag. Rita works for you. Well? Well, I wouldn't want to embarrass her by having her working under me. Oh, no, there'd be nothing like that. Oh, good. <laughs> You'll be working under Rita, Ted. Well, stuff your organic fruit and vegetables. What's happening this weekend about visiting Paul? Oh, love, this isn't the time or the place. It never is with you, is it? Yes, it is, but this isn't. Well, I'd like to see him. All right, we'll go together, but we must tell him. We can't tell him while he's in prison. He's got enough to contend with. Well, it's all very well for you, Jenny. You were his wife, now you aren't. I was his brother and still am. He's still the father of my children. He's the father of my children, too. Well, that's what I think of the mass now. Look, I think we ought to go and see him on Sunday, together. And I should say, hello, Paul. I know you're very worried about Jenny ever since your marriage broke up because of what you did. But you needn't worry, because she's found another fella. And a good home for your children. And uh, you'll be given full access, because you know the fella. In fact, you're related to him. In fact, it's me. This isn't the time or place. Liz. I'm, uh, I'm sorry about my bleeper. No, oh, please. Never wanted everything to be normal. Yeah, but a funeral isn't normal. You must understand, my husband was the type of Englishman who believed that you don't show emotion. And all the misery that he revealed after his first wife died was a source of great shame to him. And to see us overcome today with grief would horrify him. We must respect his wishes, and you did that. Thank you. We all must die. You know that. You're the philosopher. If death is unpleasant, then life becomes a journey towards something unpleasant. Neville was happy for most of his life, and he went quickly, so please, none of you grieve for him. As for me, well, I don't have any feelings, do I? I'm inhuman. Sorry. Are you all right? Come in. Are you sure? Liz, I saw. You saw what? In the hall. Neville. Neville? I thought I saw him. At the top of the stairs. Complete with harp. Yes, I, I know, I saw. Well, I mean, not Neville and the harp, but I saw you thinking you saw him. I saw how much you loved him. Well, I did. Oh, yes, I did. Well, I never realised. No, no, nor did he. What? Never told him. 
Not, not properly. Not the depth of it. You always think there's time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the other Sunday, at Sunday lunch, all the family were there, you know, Simon, Lucinda and Jenny and the children and Elvis, and I longed to say, I love you, Neville, with all my heart, but I looked at Simon and Lucinda and Jenny and the children and Elvis, and I said, would you like some more horseradish, darling? I tried to make it sound like I love you with all my heart, but I don't think he picked up on the subtext. Not very strong on subtext, Neville. No. No, he said, uh, no thanks, no, I'm, I'm not actually the most tremendous horseradish freak. Oh, I think if he'd known what I meant, he'd have just said yes. Neville always wanted to do the right thing, you know, make people happy, not be a nuisance. It's ironic, isn't it? Even in death, he didn't want to be a nuisance. And he's ended up being the most enormous nuisance to me. What on earth do you mean? Oh, not wanting any unseemly grief, wanting everyone to be happy. Forcing me, in consideration of his wishes, to come in bright clothes, enduring universal disapproval. Oh, nobody disapproves, Liz. In politics less than a year, Lying in your teeth already. Well, all right. People do disapprove. But only because they don't understand. So explain. What? Demean myself to that rabble. Arrogant, aren't I? Well, arrogant, naughty, unfaithful Liz learns her lesson. It's given her comeuppance. Cruel, immoral lady, Dame Fortune. Shall we end this stupid feud? Yes, please. Peace. Peace. Okay, 182,000. Not a penny less. Uh, look, must rush. Bye. Carrying on business at your stepfather's funeral? That's rather disrespectful. It was urgent. And he wanted everything to be normal. I'm sure he hoped human greed could be suspended for an hour or two. Well, in that case, since you're showing no respect, I'll tell you what I know about you. You're involved, up to your badly washed neck, in arranging phony mortgages for ruthless property speculators, to whom the council are giving hundreds of thousands of taxpayers' money to provide squalid bed and breakfast accommodation for the many homeless they can't afford to house because they're spending so much money on these phony mortgages that you are helping to finance. How much? That's typically your sort, straight to the checkbook. It won't work, Simon. Mother will be very upset to hear what you're doing. And so will Jenny. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <clears throat> What's going on, Elvis? Nothing, love, nothing. Well, what were you and Simon talking about? Nothing, love. Nothing to do with anything to do with you. What are Simon and Lucinda talking about? Well, nothing, love. Not nothing to do with anything to do with anything to do with you, love. If you were telling the truth, you'd have said you didn't know what they're talking about. I don't. I don't know. And since I don't know, I assume that it's nothing to do with anything to do with anything to do with anything to do with you. I hope you are telling the truth. I couldn't bear it if you lied to me. Oh, heck. If it's nothing important, why is Jenny so interested? She's always been like that. It doesn't mean anything. Don't you trust me? Yes, of course I do. I trust you utterly. Do you? Oh. I know I shouldn't say this on an occasion like this, but I can barely wait till our wedding night when you take my body. Well, I... Terrific. I, um... Terrific. You see, you may not be the subtlest person in the world. Yeah, I see. You aren't exactly a genius. You aren't exceptionally good-looking. Well, barely good-looking, but not exceptionally. But I've never met a man I feel I can trust like I feel I can trust you. Oh, Lord. Look, uh, <clears throat> I've been thinking about uh, 
those are the offers that I've been offered. Well, they're... Non-existent. That's it. Well, I was going to say that they were unexciting, unenticing, but... What the hell? You're right. They're non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. People think we don't care. <laughs> they know we care. Mm. Sorry, Ted, you were saying... Oh, yes, yes, I was. I was saying... I was, well, look, I've been thinking it would be wrong of me to refuse to work for you just because I'd be working on Dorita. No, I'm a bigger man than that. Much bigger. Very much bigger. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just ashamed that I didn't see what you saw. That Liz is putting on a big, brave act. Well, perhaps this is the first time she's experienced real emotion for anyone other than herself. Yeah. Perhaps this late awakening of love is a characteristic of us Ellsworth's minds. No, don't. Not here. I found our joy indecent today. Rita. Oh, oh, Geoffrey. Rita, I'll bring you good news. I'm going to be working under you. What? Well, I know you'd be pleased. I've joined the Silitos. Well, it'll be right cosy being close to each other again. You working with a person like me who spreads nothing but joy and happiness around. Eh? <laughs> oh, don't be too hard on yourself, Ted. You are. Well, blaming yourself for Neville's death. Don't blame myself. Blame the design of cars. <laughs> Marry me, Rita. You what? Marry me. What a time to propose. I study the sexual stimulation of grief among primitive peoples. I never thought I'd experience it myself. Are you feeling grief? Yes. For Neville, for Liz, for myself, and not recognizing that my hostility to her was thwarted brotherly love. Exactly. So, we can't get engaged today. No, no, not publicly, no. But just between the two of us, will you marry me? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Very much, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Why should I marry you? I mean, I'm not incomplete without a man. I mean, I love you. But do I want to enter into that male-dominated institution again and change my name to Ellsworth Smythe? I'll change mine. To Simcock? Hopefully not, but... What about your maiden name? Sprague. Why not? You loved your parents. Would you? Women change their names without a second thought. Why shouldn't I? Anyway, I rather like it. Geoffrey Sprague. Blunt, honest, down to earth. I never really felt double-barreled. This proposal wouldn't have anything to do with... Me going to be working in close proximity with Ted, would it? Absolutely. What? In all the films I really like, Rita, a man arrives at a small town alone, by train or on horseback. Has trouble. He sorts it out. He leaves alone, by train or on horseback. I've been that man all my life. The last few weeks I've begun to wonder rather timidly whether I want to be alone anymore. Just a moment ago, I felt a magnificent shaft of naked jealousy. Oh, marry me, Rita. I'm not leaving town on the Santa Fe. Uh, I'll let you know. That would be very kind. Champagne, madam. Yes. Thanks, Eric. Do you know, my sister-in-law's uncle fell off some scaffolding when he was 93. And the man mending his roof was 74. Good Lord. Mm, you're forced to wonder, aren't you, because I'm, I'm in the builder. Now, he was a member of the Plymouth Brethren and ascribed his longevity to righteousness and abstinence. But my sister-in-law's uncle drank like a fish. <laughs> he was in the pub crib team till he was 88. Then he pretended he was resigning because of failing eyesight. But the real reason was his girlfriend. She was 85. She wanted him to meet her after her pottery classes because she was frightened of being mugged. And uh, he didn't want the lads in the crib team to think he was henpecked. And this was in ross on Wye, not Chicago. What? Oh, I'm sorry, Eric. Oh, that was rude of me. And your stories are always absolutely fascinating. It's just... I'm thinking... I've got a very important decision to make. Mm, well, let's have another Volibon or a tortilla chip, no doubt. I've been trying not to tell you because it doesn't seem right to be pleased about anything today, but well, I've done it and I feel terrific. You've done what, Karen? I've enrolled for three A-levels. 
I've taken the first tentative step up the ladder to self-fulfillment. Oh, that's great. Carol, well done. <laughs> Who knows where it'll end? The poly, university? Wouldn't it be a laugh if I got a better degree than Elvis? Oh. <laughs> it's all thanks to your encouragement. I've given up men completely. They only want one thing. Yesterday, this fitter with two to twos asked me out, and I thought to myself, Simone de Beauvoir never went out with a fitter with two to twos. Now, don't become a snob, whatever you do, Carol. Oh, it wasn't because he was a fitter. Oh, because of the two to twos. I mean, all men are the same, aren't they? Well, not quite all men, Carol. You what? Jeffrey's just proposed to me. <laughs> You've turned him down. Well, not, not in so many words. It, uh, it isn't as simple as that, love. Would you say it isn't as simple as that if he wasn't a successful anthropologist, but a fitter with two tattoos? Lise, one of the sad aspects of this, you know, very sad affair is that my son, our son, is going to be without a father for the second time. You, you're suggesting that you and I... No, 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 no. Bloody hell, no. I mean, no, I mean, that's, you know... Over him, it isn't it? I mean, but when he grows up, he won't remember Neville. I mean, he won't. So, Liz, I'm offering to you visit him, you know, take him out for the day, take him to the zoo, try to fill in that gap in his psyche, that sort of thing. Are you saying all this because you feel so guilty? Guilty? What on earth do you mean? Well, you were driving the car. I wasn't. I wasn't driving, he was. What? Well, oh, yeah. I thought everyone knew that. Oh, heck, now I realise what Rita meant. No, look, he gave me a break. He, he drove for a bit. And, look, Neville, he tried to indicate right, but he got the windscreen wiper instead. And this car was overtaking and it just broadside. Uh, <clears throat> look, let's... Let's talk about it some other time, shall we? About little Jocelyn. I mean, I would like to have one son I could be proud of. I would... Oh, 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 all right? Good, good boy. Not that my lads are bad lads. Liz, about Neville. It was quick. You know, he knew nothing about it. Thank you. It's all right. But look on the right side, eh, love? Eh? I mean... Where he is, we don't know. We, we can't. You know, maybe he's happy. Maybe he's reunited with Jane. I think it would stretch a point for me to regard that prospect as looking on the bright side. Oh, heck. Oh, where are you going? Oh, hmm? Oh, you know. Oh, can I help? Oh, well, thanks. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be lovely having you working for us, Ted. Lovely. No, thanks. <laughs> no, no, I mean it. It is. It's going to be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Mm. I mean, all right. You said we'd be bankrupt by Christmas, but that's forgiven. <laughs> Thanks. Mm. OK. He called us freaky, creaky, nut cut of folk, but that's forgotten because... And this is the point. It's going to be lovely having you working for us. <laughs> Thanks. Mm, even oh. if you have a stubborn, opinionated sod. All oh, right. Thank you, Betty. Mm. <clears throat> hey, 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 hey. You can't come any further. Are you sure? I mean, if you need help, there's no need to be coy. Oh, no, I'm not coy, Betty, but, you know, I can manage. Mm, yes, because there's nothing to be coy about. I mean, we've all got them. You are? Well, no, women haven't. We've got other things. But we have all got parts of the body <laughs> of various peculiar kinds, and I've seen it all before, because I was a nurse before I met Rodney. Right, right. Well, thank you very much, Betty, but uh, I'll be all right. All right. Message received. You're coy. Understood. No, I'm not coy, you know, but... I can manage. If you get into difficulties, shout nurse. Oh. Mm. 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 Uh, we, uh, we negotiated a fee, Mrs. Badger. Oh, uh, yes, I... Oh, it's, it's all right. I, I, I don't want it. Would you... Uh... Or would you send it to a charity of Mr. Badger's choice? With pleasure, Eric. I mean, being invited 
to do the honours here today ahead of every barman in the town. It, it's been the culmination of my life's work. Well, very glad you feel that way. He was a fine man, Mrs Badger. Eric, please. There aren't many of us left. Oh, Eric, you're going to make me cry again. And I've been trying so hard not to. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, buddy. Mm. Oh. Dad. Yeah? Dad, have you... Have you ever loved somebody and been too shy to tell them? <laughs> no, no. Shyness has never oh, been... Oh, I have. <laughs> I've met a man and loved him for many years and said nothing. Met him regularly, said nothing. I don't think I need to tell you who that man is. Betty? Betty, you mean... Precisely. Someone not a million miles from the spot on which I'm standing on. And then the time came when I realised I had to admit my secret love so that my secret love would be no secret anymore. It sounds familiar, is it Shakespeare? Anyway, the time came when I had to say... I love you with all my heart. Oh, Betty. Betty. Ah, no, 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 Betty said that she loved me. Oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't. I, I told him how much I loved you, Rodney. Yeah. Oh, Betty, do you mean to say, Betty, that you were talking? <laughs> oh, 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 help ah, somebody. Oh, 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 Rodney, I told him, I told him how, how when we first met, how, how I was a nurse and, and how you were in bed with... Well, we won't tell them what he had. And how shy we were and how many years it was before we realised how much we loved each other. Oh, oh, you do believe me, don't you, Rodney? Oh, of course I do. Oh. There you go, sir. Oh. Take it to boo. All right, thank you. Are you right, Ted? I think so. Good. You sat. You were? Thinking Betty and I, like everyone else, carrying on. Well, eh... Uh, not, not everyone else. <clears throat> so conceited you think every woman loves you, you're sacked. I haven't even started work yet. You're still sacked. Two hundred pound a week down the drain. Two hundred? I had more like four hundred in mind. All right. You can have it. Oh. You're sacked. Four hundred pound a week down the drain. <laughs> Come on, old girl. Um. Come on, Ted. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes. That was a lovely party, Liz. <laughs> Most enjoyable. Betty. Oh, no. No, not enjoyable. Awful. Oh. No, not awful, no. You, what I mean to say is you made the best of a bad job. No, not a bad job. Good night. No, not night. Afternoon. I'm sorry, Liz. It's the emotion. I'm so sorry. It's all right. Liz... Liz, I'm, I'm sorry. It's all right. I think the dear man would have seen the funny side. Don't you, Rita? Yes, I rather think he would, Liz. I think it would have tickled Neville pink. Oh, Liz. Wouldn't it? My love. <laughs> 